Okay, welcome to part G of our lectures on consumer surplus and producer surplus and deadweight loss and all that. And, and so we've already graphed and calculated in equilibrium what's going on. We looked at a price ceiling of four. We looked at a uh, production quota of two units. And in those cases, we saw that the outcome in terms of quantity and variable cost and deadweight loss were, were the same. But now we're going to look at an excise tax and see what happens. And so we're back again. I'm using yet another graphing program to see how this works. I think I think this might be the one we, we settle on. But So we have our same demand and supply curve. So we, we know we're familiar with those. Uh, 12 minus 2 thirds Q for the demand and P equals 2 plus Q for supply. The equilibrium price would be 8 and the equilibrium quantity would be 6. But an excise tax. So an excise tax is when the government passes a, a tax on a product or a service. What is special about an excise tax is that it is the same tax per unit no matter what the price of the product is. Now this is different from an, a sales tax because with a sales tax it's a percentage of the price and the sales tax will be more for a higher priced product than for a lower priced product. So for example with a 10% sales tax if the price was ten dollars the sales tax will be a dollar per unit. But if the price was only five dollars a 10% sales tax would be fifty cents per unit. And those are a little bit more complicated to analyze than an excise tax, and that's E-X-C-I-S-E. -E. An excise tax is the same no matter what the price. So if we had a $1 excise tax, then a $1 product would have a $1 tax, and so would a $10 product have a $1 tax per unit. Now, we're going to look at a, an excise tax a couple different ways, but let's suppose first that it is an excise tax on a consumer and let's suppose that the tax was five dollars per unit so if we put an excise tax of five dollars on the consumer so what does this mean well to picture I, I spelled it wrong here excise tax uh, of five dollars to picture what that would mean Imagine that the consumer, when they walk in and they, they pay for the product, they hand one pile of money to the seller, and that's the price the seller receives. And then the consumer has to also hand an additional $5 to a government official for each unit. So it's each unit that they pay. So for each unit I buy, I hand a pile of money to the seller, and for each unit I buy, I have to shell out $5 for the actual product. Now, what's going to happen? Well, <clears throat> the easiest way to model this is to think carefully about what the demand curve actually means. What the demand curve tells us is marginal benefit. Marginal benefit is the most you'd be willing to pay for each additional unit. So, for example, the sixth unit of this product I buy, the most I'm willing to pay for that sixth unit itself is $8 here. And so that tell, that's why in equilibrium a consumer doesn't want to buy the seventh or the eighth or the ninth unit, because at an equilibrium price of $8, you're going to stop buying at six units, because the most you're willing to pay for the sixth one is $8. Similarly, the most you're willing to pay for the third unit is $10. Now, if the price was $12, a consumer would not be willing to buy anything. Now, at $12, you'd say, forget it. Now, think about how this is going to change the demand curve. If I also have to, I have to pay for the product at the store, plus I have to hand $5 to a government official, is this going to increase my willingness and ability to buy the product, move the demand curve to the right, or will it decrease it, move the demand curve to the left? 
Well, it's going to decrease my willingness and ability to buy the product. Now, with an excise tax, think about that $12 again. At a price of $12, I would be willing to buy none, and that's without a tax. Now, what's the highest price I'd be willing to pay and still buy none now? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to not buy any now at $7 because I know that if I had to walk in and pay $7 for the product and then shell out another 5 to the tax man, then that's the same as a price of 12 So now at a price of 7 I would be willing to buy none. But otherwise, the demand, uh, the slope is going to stay the same. And so it's going to shift this demand curve downward parallel, and the y-intercept will not be 12 anymore. It's going to be 7. Now let me see if I can get this program to uh, give me a copy of this curve. No, it's just moving the whole curve, so I'd better, uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Now I've got a copy that I can move down parallel and uh, the y-intercept is 7 and the slope is still to minus 2 thirds, down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. And so we have a new demand curve now. Let me label that. All right, new demand curve. We'll call that uh, D2. And when the demand curve goes down exactly five dollars because of the five dollar excise tax this is what makes it kind of easy to uh, analyze we see here there's going to be a new equilibrium and you could solve this explicitly uh, because now the demand will not be 12 minus two-thirds q uh, the new demand is going to be um, d equals sorry price equals uh, 7 minus 2 thirds times Q. And so we could just continue our analysis with uh, that equation, uh, P equals 7 minus 2 thirds Q. And we could solve where that new demand equation equals the new supply equation, and we, would, we could verify that the new price would be 5 and the new quantity will be 3. However, okay, here's where the, uh, the fun really gets going. At that price of 5, remember that's not the real total price that I'm going to be paying. That's just the price that the seller gets. And so if we wanted to draw our total revenue rectangle as before, it would be uh, from the business person's standpoint, 3 units times 5 and the total revenue would be 15, right? But that's just one total revenue equals 3 times 5 equals $15. Um, because I have another cost that I have to uh, shell out in order to get this product. And I also have to spend... Um, here, let me see if I can change the color there. I also have to spend another five dollars right on top of that for each of these units. And so the three times five, that's the amount of total revenue that the seller gets. But then there's this other five dollars times three that the uh, government is going to get. And let me uh, make that a little bit lighter color here. And that is the... You can see I'm still getting used to this program. That is the uh, tax revenue. The tax revenue is this, is going to be the same uh, as the total revenue that the seller actually gets. So there's going to be a $15, 3 times 5 rectangle. And then there's going to be another uh, total revenue. Right? Total revenue is also $15. Now, what else happens here in this uh, setup? Well, the total price that I'm really paying is $10. 5 to the seller plus 5 to the tax man, $10. And so let's look at this little um, graph up top here. What are we going to call this little area above the total price that I have to pay and below the demand curve? 
sure enough that is the consumer surplus and we can calculate that as an area of a triangle here so consumer surplus looks like it's going to be one half times three times two three times two is six half of that is three dollars so uh, the consumer surplus is going to be equal to three times two six half of that three dollars consumer surplus now we also want to uh, we'd want to break apart this total revenue into two parts uh, we'd want to break it into the producer surplus and the variable costs okay I'm really liking this drawing program because I can I can do uh, make this uh, transparent here we can calculate the uh, producer surplus we can see it here as a triangle below the price the producer gets and above the variable cost and the variable costs on the bottom so we'll pick this up in just a minute in the second part